What's going on, Sooner Nation? I hope you guys have been enjoying the weather outside because I've actually gotten an opportunity to take the dogs out for a walk and just enjoy the weather, but also get a chance to watch OU Sports completely dominate this past weekend. Hope you guys got to enjoy it as well. But today we got to talk about OU Softball because they went through this weekend and where maybe we thought they would have challenges with a Mississippi State or a San Diego State at the beginning of the season. They ended up coming into this weekend and just winning 42 to 5 over all of their opponents. And I kind of have some thoughts about the softball team and what we might see. Before we dive into it, guys, though, need to hear from y'all. So make sure you do one thing. You hit that like and you hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And Make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down in the comments below, giving me your thoughts. I'm going to leave you guys with this to answer today. Let me know who you guys want on the podcast to talk about softball, right? Obviously, you guys know I'm not maybe the most knowledgeable person out there when it comes to softball. You know, I just want to talk about it with y'all. But I want to bring people on that you guys want to help kind of review the games coming up, uh, talk about the games that we had over the weekend. So drop those names Drop their Twitter handles. I'll reach out to them. We'll get them here on the podcast. All right. This is your first time joining us. Thank you for tuning into the PG Show, where we talk about all things Oklahoma athletics. We're talking about basketball. Uh, we're going to start probably for March Madness. Just with everything else going on, I think it's that's going to be easier for me to start then. Uh, ease into it. Uh, we're going to talk softball. Drew England will come on. We'll talk about baseball. And then, of course, we'll have all your football coverage with recruiting during the regular season. All of that great stuff. So, all right, let's dive into it. The Oklahoma Sooners, they played a softball matchup this week in Mary Nutter Challenge. And there were some takeaways this week because they won 42 to 5 across all their games, right? Outscored their opponents 42 to 5, increasing their win streak up to 67 straight games. And I think now we're kind of asking ourselves, how far is this win streak going to go? Like, do a lot of people kind of tune in at this point and go, when is going to be that game that ends the streak? Or is this going to be a streak that goes all the way throughout the World Series before we maybe see a loss? Or does it happen this year at all? And the reason why I asked that question is, if you guys remember when I had uh, Andrew, Sooner Soup guy on Twitter, uh, on to kind of talk about the season, right? What was one thing that I had a question about just as kind of a casual watching softball? And the question I had was, you lost Jordy Ball, and how was the pitching going to be, right? And you lost Grace Lyons at shortstop. Like, was the defense going to take a step down? And in reality, although I... I for some reason, it feels like we're not getting as many strikeouts as I felt like we've gotten in the past, but I might be completely wrong on that. Maybe it's just a mindset thing at this point. I feel like our defense is pretty freaking good because, I mean, you're not just winning games. like You're winning games like 8-0 in run-ruling teams consistently at this point. Now, I will say... Compared to previous years, it feels like we're not hitting as many runs and winning those run rules by like 14, 15 runs, right? It doesn't feel like that. But, you know, look at how many teams Oklahoma has put a donut on, right? They're 14-0 and this season. They're 3-0 and against top 25 teams. They've had seven wins via run rule. So half their games this season have been a win via run rule. They've had 110 runs scored. They've only allowed 12 runs. They've had 22 home runs. They've had nine shutouts. So 14 games, nine shutouts. They've only had four errors, which I felt like they would have had more kind of losing Grace Lyons, moving Tiara Jennings into that shortstop spot, having to pick second base, right? You know, you kind of had these question marks and they kind of just came in and fixed it. So you guys have to let me know what your guys' thoughts are on that. And let me know if I'm just completely crazy. But that's kind of how I felt. I felt like this defense and the pitching staff is uh, one, I feel like the pitching staff is way deeper than I thought it would be going into the season. And let's just say if they can 50% of the time shut out your opponents. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. 50% of the times, if you can run rule your opponents, which means generally you're probably getting a shutout because Oklahoma's got nine of those. So only two more were not run rules. But let's say you run rule your opponents 50% of the time and then you shut them out. 
nine times out of 14 games, you're looking at a team that might possibly not lose a game. Now, as Andrew alluded earlier in the year, I do think probably the biggest probably question mark for Oklahoma on the schedule this season is going to be Texas, right? Texas is the number two team in the country. Is Texas going to be the team that comes in and gives Oklahoma a fit? And the reason why I say that is we don't play Texas at home this year, guys. We play them in Austin three times, April 5th, April 6th, and April 7th, which only one of those games is broadcasted on ESPN. So I know ESPN people don't watch this show, but if for some reason an ESPN person does happen to see the show, do the right thing and make all three of those games on national television because a number one versus a possibly ranked number two matchup, Oklahoma, who's going to have a historic win streak up at that time against a heated rivalry, that should be on national television. And don't pull the BS that you got something else that night with the NBA or whatever. Because I promise you, last night, the Kings and the Miami Heat were on TV. I didn't want to watch the Kings and the Miami Heat. I'd rather watch a matchup like this. Just put it on TV. But Oklahoma goes into this weekend, and they kick off their first game with a win against Mississippi State, number 20 or 25, however you look at the rankings, Mississippi State. And they win that game 9-3. to three. And that might have been one of the only games this week where you looked at it and said, no, oh, yeah, maybe Oklahoma struggled a little bit. Like, okay, cool. Got Wisconsin. You beat them 10-2. to two. San Diego State, this was a team that was ranked earlier in the season, like at the beginning of the season, and they've completely tapered off, and Oklahoma beat them 7 nothing. and then you go and you beat a Seattle team who, uh, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was watching the game, didn't they have a billboard up that showed – teams in the Mary Nutter Challenge that were hitting the most home runs, and Seattle was like right up there with Oregon. So you held a Seattle team that was hot with the bats, obviously, to a donut. And then Loyola, Marymount, you held them to a 9-0 victory for us. You won it in five innings. And so I look at this and I say, Kenzie Hansen, she's still a clutch hitter. She still does what she needs to do. I really like the future that you have with Ella Parker because multiple times this season, she's done what she needs to to give the Sooners a lead. Nicole May, you know, she does Nicole May things. And you got to love her. But at times when she's giving up the hits, you kind of pull your hair out. But, I mean, dude, she finds her footing. And... She's a good pitcher. I mean, I, I looked at it at the beginning of the season, and I think Nicole May was one of the question marks that I had at pitcher this year, and I wondered, would Nicole May be good enough to get it done for the Sooners, right? Like, was like was she good enough to... Obviously, she's not going to replace Jordy Ball, but was she good enough to lead Oklahoma as one of the tenured Oklahoma starters at the pitching? And she's done what she needed to. Then you've got Riley Boone coming in, right? And she's been able to hit those RBIs. You get Cassidy Pickering in there, another talented girl who's came in. And, I mean, she's been everything Oklahoma expected her. I mean, well, at least some of the things we expected her to be. Carly Keeney, you've seen her come in. She's pitched in relief. I don't know about y'all. Again, I think Oklahoma can probably take this win streak. Here's here's how I see this win streak going. Oklahoma either takes this win streak to Texas and only loses one, or they win against Texas, and there's maybe a chance that they don't lose another game on their schedule. Yeah, you got Oklahoma State in Love's Field in May. You got May 3rd, May 4th, May 5th, right before the Big 12 Championship. Then you got regionals, which you'd imagine you'd host one. Oklahoma obviously struggled last year. You had the Super Regionals. Then you got the World Series. If Oklahoma doesn't drop one to Texas, I'm starting to believe maybe you don't lose this win streak this year. And I will say this. If Oklahoma doesn't lose the win streak and it goes beyond 67, or of course it's going to go beyond 67 games, but let's say it goes beyond 80 games, 90 games, we're looking at maybe one of the most untouchable win streaks in sports history. Looking at maybe the win, the win streak that Oklahoma has in football. 
how it's untouched. Even the Georgia Bulldogs, who, quite frankly, everybody thought, hey, if Georgia wins a third straight national championship, Georgia might challenge that winning streak that OU holds, right? Everybody kind of thought that, which that winning streak, by the way, was 47 games from 1953 to 1957. This is one of those records that you look at in sports history that say it might never be touched again. The Wilk Chamberlain, 100 points, right? Those are the kind of records that this win streak, I think, is about to get to. Not to mention, you look at some of the next closest programs in softball, which, by the way, huge shout out to Seth Oliveris on Twitter, who is just coming in clutch with these stats, right? Coming in clutch. Uh, Alabama's got 16 consecutive games. You got Cal, Duke, LSU with 13. Those are the next, I mean, dare you say, closest teams to Oklahoma in the win streak column. So I'm looking at it for Oklahoma, and I say this. Your next set of games coming up, Miami at Ohio, or Miami of Ohio, Liberty, Louisiana, Liberty, Louisiana again. You got two games on March 1st, two games on March 2nd, and then you're wrapping it up, final game, March 3rd, 1230. All these games will be in Norman. The inaugural season in Lovesfield. The awaited time. Like, I mean, we have awaited to see softball played in the stadium for two years now. This is exciting. This is this is a I feel like dear a new era of softball, right? You know, Oklahoma is going to kind of lead the way with the standard for what these softball stadiums should look like. And you get to kick it off this week. And listen, the teams you're playing, like Louisiana, they ain't somebody that you should overlook. Louisiana could come in here. They could upset Oklahoma if they overlook them. But in reality, these are games you're going to have home field advantage. Going to have the home crowd behind you. Obviously, if you're one of those girls, you probably want to hit, you want to be one of the first people to hit a home run. I would imagine the bats are going to be hot over this next weekend. Now, we're going to have somebody else on the podcast this weekend to review the upcoming week's games, talk about that, talk about the expectations. But I want to hear from y'all about this past week because, again, I, I look at it. And I came away a little bit more impressed, especially with the defensive side of the ball. I think it's hard at this point for me to be impressed with what they're doing offensively. But defensively, I look at it and I say, they've exceeded my expectations of what I thought they could be so far. So, Sooner Nation, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like, you hit the subscribe button, make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down the comments below. If you guys are listening to this on any of the podcast platforms, Apple, Google, or Spotify, go ahead, leave me five stars, drop me a review, jump over to Twitter, let me know who you guys would want me to be on the show. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you do the same thing. Jump the comments, drop those Twitter handles, drop the names of the people that you guys want me to bring on. We'll try to get them on. And until next time, peace.